what is going on comic fam it is your boy the bearded comic bro and i am joined by comic book creator daryl banks thank you for coming on to the show oh my pleasure my pleasure glad to be here glad yes. to be here you you are a super talented artist and you've worked for image you've worked for stuff with marvel you are probably most known for your work at dc on green lantern and your work with kyle rayner Whew, look at that right there <laughs> oh man but i gotta start off the show so i met you briefly a couple years ago at an event here in columbus mm -hmm. my local lcs uh crazy comics the owner alan he set up a an event at a craft beer store where it was they did a beer tasting and they basically took beers and paired them with each of the different ring <laughs> colors and it was probably the coolest event ever <laughs> it was that was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun i like the I, idea like i feel like because they what they do they take different rings and they say okay you know the star sapphire what beer would pair with this ring and why and it was it was more than just like oh because it's a red beer we're gonna pair it with this you know or you know with the anger like all these different things it was really cool it was. But i bring i bring that up because uh during the question and answer cut time we got to ask you some questions one of the questions I asked you was, I noticed in your artwork that you utilize a lot of wrestling and wrestling. Yep. And I, and you, I asked you that why, and I wanted to, I wanted to ask that again to share it with people that might not know that this love for wrestling, where does it come from? And then how do you incorporate it? How did you incorporate it into your art? Well, I, you know, I've been a fan of wrestling since about 86, um, which is ironic because I had family members that were big into wrestling before that, but I used to actually hate wrestling. I, yeah, I, I'd turn on Saturday night and see these guys screaming at the camera, and I'm like, this stuff is even, isn't even real. And then one day, I think I was watching uh, uh, the National Wrestling Alliance, and it was uh, something going on with probably, I think it was Dusty Rhodes and Magnum TA and a few others. And it just, the, the character just kind of pulled me in. I'm like, hmm, what, you know, what's going on here? Honestly, it was one of those things where, how could you not like it? I mean, you had, especially, you know, back in the eighties, you, you had so many amazing, innovative things going on that are affecting the business even today. I mean, uh, I think about, uh, I follow uh, Arn Anderson's podcast to this day. Uh, it's funny. I used to hate the horseman, but Arn was hard to hate because he, his promos were so eloquent considering the audience right <laughs> and considering the act he had to follow with a flair but really i think one of the best promo guys was, was the enforcer i'm telling you so uh one of my goals to this day is to get the old tv title that he had around then and a friend of mine has one and uh, he let me hold it i'm thinking yeah i think i'm gonna get one of those at some point but wrestling i think translates well to comics because um so many artists have done martial arts and, and that sort of thing, but how many have pulled off wrestling moves in, in, in comics? I just think the two work together very well. So what I thought was, I think it all started with, um, I put Big Van Vader in a background in Legion of Superheroes once. I thought, no one's going to know who that is. I figured if it was Hulk Hogan or somebody, they'd know. But, you know, everybody at the office recognized. And I thought, well, how? And they said, we are right down the street from Madison Square Garden. Yeah, we know who Big Van Vader is. And so I thought, well, can I keep this going? So I, I would push the envelope. I did a, uh, a Legion of Superheroes pinup with, uh, what was the character? Uh, Ultra Boy and the Persuader. And he had the Persuader in an abdominal stretch. They loved it. They printed it. And so I just thought, you know, if you, if you, if you keep let me do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep expanding on it. And I had... Uh, well, in Green Lantern 50, the final death match <laughs> between Hal Jordan and Sinestro, you know, at one point he DDTs him and he puts him in the camel clutch and he kills him with the sleeper, you know. And I thought, they're not going to let me keep all that. They're going to edit out some of it. Nope, it's all in there. And I was surprised, you know. So uh, fast forward to the next issue. I had uh, Kyle Rayner had, had beaten uh, uh, this jobber <laughs> of a villain. And he put his hand, his like his foot on his chest and raised his arms, kind of like the ultimate warrior, you know, uh, after that victory over Randy Savage, uh, low those many years ago. So anytime I could, I would, I would sneak it in there. And I just thought they're going to stop me at some point. And they, they never did, they never did. <laughs> 
I love it because I just hope that someone's watching this and they're going to go back now and read their comics like, holy cow, yeah, he did. He literally had Hal Jordan DDT Sinestro and then put him in the sleeper hole. <laughs> um, so you talked about Green Lantern and that's kind of what you're most known for um, is co being co-creator of Green Lantern. But how did you get your start into uh, creating comics? I started comics in the independent uh, back in the 89, working for you know, whoever would give me work. Uh, the first company I worked with was called Innovation. And uh, I was working on uh, Justice Machine. And then Justice Machine moved to a company called Millennium. And I was there for a while. Uh, I was in the independence for about five years before I ever get to DC. But, you know, it was kind of like, you know, I was in uh, NXT <laughs> before getting that call up to the main roster, you know, yeah, uh, doing things like the Wild Wild West uh, based on an old TV show and Doc Savage, Man of Bronze, and things like that. And uh, my first DC work was uh, Legion of Superheroes. Mm -hmm. And I, while I was doing it, I, I was always talking about ideas I had for Green Lantern, but never thought, you know, you know, I, they don't know me. I, they're, they're not going to give me a shot at that. So it was like I would talk about if I ever got that title shot, brother, I, you know, I would I'd do this, that, and the other. And the assistant editor would listen to my rants about what I would do. And then, you know, they, they thought, well, let's think about it. Let's give this guy a shot. So that's how I got the green title. <laughs> <laughs> the green, that's awesome. So how quickly then from your first work at DC uh, to then getting that shot at Green Lantern? Um, it's a good question. It wasn't fast. No, nothing okay. about my career happened quickly. And I think yeah, that was ultimately good because I taught for about five years at the, at the college that I graduated from, CCAD. And I would tell my students who would always ultimately get discouraged in their goals and that sort of thing. I said, the key is, you know, if it's really in you, if you really have that fire for whatever you want to do, it, it won't let you quit. And I, I had every reason that this was not going to back in the old days, they used to actually give you rejection letters. I mean, it's almost like, no, go away. <laughs> and so, you know, I had a stack like a phone book and I just, I thought one day I want to make this work. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry for all the wrestling analogies, but that's just how I thought. No, I said, I'm going to keep great. challenging for the belt. I'm going to keep challenging for the belt. And one day I'm going to get that three count. You know, that's, that's so do you, do you still have those rejection letters or do you like, no, I'm done. No, I, and I think back in the, maybe I had been on lantern for a while and I thought, yeah. well, what's the point in keeping these, but I wish I kept them because I think people would hear how thick the stack was and they think I'm exaggerating. It's like, if I go, boom look, here it is you can read right. them like oh wow why didn't you quit <laughs> so i kind of wish i did or at least taking a picture of them but so no it was it was a lot um at least back then you know the larger companies they would actually give you correspondence and every convention that had i mean anything more than let's say 100 people or you know or more would have marvel or dc set up now that i mean well not counting 2020 but right before then it's you know it was hard to actually get an audience with the larger companies but uh but back in the old days yeah they they would they would actually write you back and yeah <laughs> break your heart <laughs> oh man so you got so you talking green lantern then a little bit you got into it um and right off the bat they put you on pretty much a pretty big story arc uh with the green lantern what was that experience like when you first got to work on that well, at first I was excited because I could tell people what I was doing. But then when I heard all the changes, I thought, oh, I thought I was going to be doing Hal Jordan. It's kind of like, you know, I thought, well, that sucks. But I remember my, the, the immortal words of my editor, Kevin Dooley. He said, we're going to be making big changes and you'll be thankful you were on the ground floor of this. And so yeah. he was right. Absolutely right. So um, because previously the book wasn't doing that well, we had free reign to do some really crazy things. I mean, it all stems from the success of Death of Superman and all right. the crossovers. It was spiking sales and it's sort of like, you know, the, the suits, the powers that be thought, you know, what can we do to stimulate sales like this consistently? So um, th that, that's what gave us the, the, the green light to, to try some things. And yeah. uh, it's funny, there are those that really hate, oh, you guys ruined Hal Jordan. I'm like, no, you ruined Hal Jordan by not buying the book. See how that works? <laughs> if you had been doing that, they wouldn't have messed with it. So, uh, uh, That's and actually the thing is, it's a misnomer. We, we, we like Hal Jordan. I mean, the whole point was we made him more powerful than he ever was. 
and he became a, a topic of conversation when he wasn't previously, you know. And the idea was ultimately it all come back full circle uh, to him being a Green Lantern again and, the, and restarting the court. Ron Mars put it like this. He said, it's like leasing a car. You know, you can drive it anywhere you want, but after a while you got to give it back and it doesn't belong to you. So that, you know, that was the yeah. plan. But um, I think to the, everyone's surprise, it got uh, more critical acclaim than they expected. I mean, next thing you know, Parallax was the shiny new toy at the company. And so other editors higher up in the, in the hierarchy wanted to use them and do things with them. So, uh, I mean, that was cool, but unexpected at the same time. Right. Yeah. And sorry if you hear, uh, I'm in my basement and you know, here in Columbus, uh, we have had weather. So the sub pump goes off. That's how. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Welcome I'm glad to... yours is working. I, I've, I've had relatives who've had their sub pump fail on them before. And uh, right. I think uh, I want to say my youngest sister is dealing with that right now. So, right. No, so I, I, I I'm it. okay that I'm <laughs> hearing it because that means it was working. That means it's working. You don't want it to not work. Trust right. me. Right. <laughs> like, stop working for right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you got to work on this idea. And like you said, it's, I like that I concept of you're, you're leasing the car, right? Cause these are properties that, you know, characters that, you know, have been known forever. And even the ones that you create, you know, it still is under the banner of DC and you get to see changes and stuff of like parallax. Let's talk. You said you brought up parallax. So let's talk about that real quick. What was, okay. um, what was the design? Cause it was definitely a unique design um, kind of, of messing with how look a little bit like where did you where did you come up with the idea for that design for parallax well we we wanted we wanted to change them but not make them so differently that you you had zero idea who you were looking at right. the thing is um i well keep in mind this was the 90s so a lot of things that were happening were i was influenced by what was going on around me the, the image was really huge so armor was huge of course it still is Mm -hmm. um, so I, I knew right off the bat he was going to have some sort of armor. It wasn't going to just look like spandex. And uh, it, the, only, the last sticking point was the name because they were going to call him the Protector because they owned that name already. It was a, a little used Teen Titans character from many years ago, and they, they thought they just would recycle it. And I thought, the name Protector, okay, let's go over this, this, this story and what he's going to do. How is he the Protector? So they're like, oh, they, they were adamant. No, no, that's that's the name. That's the name. And I thought, um, well, maybe maybe if I can give him something that starts with the letter P. And I thought, parallax, because parallax, the scientific term, deals with point of view. I said, if nothing else, his point of view has changed. Mm -hmm. No, no, parallax. No, no, he's the protector. And so I actually wrote out why I thought they that they should change the name, send it to them. They thought about it. I'm like, okay, parallax is cool. That, that'll work. You know, and Ron was fine with it from the beginning, but editorial and, and the legal yeah. department that had to, you know, they had to think it over for a while. But, but yeah, I had to sell them on the name Parallax. And it's funny, they, uh, that name even made it all the way to that movie, which was so great. <laughs> um, but yeah, so a name that they didn't like, now it's everywhere. You know, right. uh, I think Jeff Johns even had uh, a, a, like a Parallax in the flash, in the, in the speed force and all that. Next, you know, Parallax was everywhere, you know. Yep. But uh, I don't mind that at all. I don't mind no, it at all. You know, not at all. Like, and it, it just is cool to see um, because the character, the story arc of how Jordan in that is, you know, he's doing what he thinks is right. Like it's, you know, and it's kind of is this downward spiral of, you know, he keeps making it worse and worse for him. Um, and so I that the say where you got the name from that's a very interesting thing. I had never heard that before. Well, the the idea was that. I never really thought, and I, and I don't think Ron ever did, Hal wasn't technically a villain. It was more like he was just really, really angry, and it just made him snap. I like to use the example of uh, that old uh, Michael Douglas movie, Falling Down. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's movie. part of the reason I gave Hal that kind of that crew cut kind of thing. It's a little bit inspired oh. by Michael Douglas falling yeah. down. You know, I thought, have you ever seen that movie? It's like this guy. You know, he was a decent guy, but, you know, he just had one too many bad days in a row right. and it was too much. So, you know, that's how I thought more of Parallax more than he's a villain now. He's yeah. just going to conquer the universe. No, not really. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be able to read it the same now because I'm like, because watching that movie, you're like, oh, yeah, like, it's not going to get any worse. He can't do anything else. Like, we're and you're like, oh. and it just escalated. You it's know? just like, oh, he's OK. He's taking the death step. And that's the right. same type of thing with it. like, that's wow. That's so cool. Um, So. Like I said, your your artwork on Green Lantern's iconic. Um, 
and one of the things I love is the covers and that issue number 49 is probably one of the most iconic covers in my mind. And I got to ask though, how often do you get asked to do that and replace Hal Jordan for a commission? All the time, all the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing one right now. Uh, what's, the thing what's, is, the, what's the craziest people that have, what are, what are some of your favorite ones that people have had you do then? Um, I've done a Ric Flair. Um, one time at a, at a, con, a con sketch with him with uh, his Hall of Fame ring. Oh, wow. uh, let's see. I've done Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet and rings. Uh, but usually people just want, you know, the, the classic one or replace it with how, with uh, Kyle Rain or that sort of thing. Yeah. But okay. uh, I mean, I've done a lot of them. I mean, that's my most expensive cover because people keep having me do it. I, nice. I thought, well, if I make the price, if I raise it, you know, I'll, I mean, I don't hate doing it, but it's kind of like after a while, like, oh, again. <laughs> But I thought, you know, if if uh, if I raise that price, maybe I won't ask. No, it, it, I think I do more now. So, <laughs> <They're> like, <"All> right. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's like I said, it's not like I hate it. I had that conversation with with uh, legendary artist Bob Layton once because he did uh, Tony Stark Demon in a Bottle, mm -hmm. and that's his number one requested one. And what he'll do is he'll only have so many times he'll allow someone to commission him that in one year, gotcha. or. You know, I mean, he just put stipulations on it. Right. He said, well, he, he's like, I'm not a copying machine. And after a while, I just want to do something else. And I'm thinking, yeah, but it's such a great cover. I mean, I just remember as, you know, when I was, I think I was in, I think I was in college when that came out. Yeah. And, you know, during that era, that was, that was like my, uh, what am I, like the, the, well, the Miller Daredevil and around the time of, of Iron Man, we, we really took characters that you didn't expect to, take dark turns in their life yeah. but it made them so much more dimensional you know and that was a goal of mine to, to be able to uh add something to a character like that so that people remember it and just and maybe even identify with because i think maybe we've all struggled with something you thought well a superhero can't go through that yes they can and they got through it and so can i type of thing yeah that's so that's so cool so Sticking with your art, you like you said earlier, you've worked with Marvel, you've worked with DC, so you've gotten to draw in comics a lot of comic book characters, like iconic comic book characters, right? You've gotten to draw Captain America, Namor, and uh, you know, obviously Green Lantern and Aquaman and Superman with a mullet, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mullet Superman, yeah, several um, times. <laughs> is, is there one that I'll, I'll take out Green Lantern, even if it wasn't the case, but is there someone that you got to draw that you really love getting the chance to draw and like, what, and like it hit you like, holy cow, I'm drawing a comic book character like that I've loved forever and I'm getting to put it on paper now in a book. Well, I, almost anything from Marvel or DC. I mean, okay. but I think the, the one that really hit me the hardest was the first time I drew Superman professionally. Mm -hmm. Like, this is it. You yeah. know, it's like a character that I designed meeting Superman. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Batman as well. I'm, but just for me personally, just like, wow. I mean, the original superhero, it's like I thought, this is, you know, this is great. This is this is why I got into this business and to be able to do that sort of thing, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that 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 meant a lot. Because I could tell my family, that, you know, I mean, especially, I mean, I've done some fill-ins for Superman. Uh, yeah. So, being able to to have that on my resume that was it was a great honor you know? that's cool so before i got into once i scheduled this interview i talked to a couple of my fellow youtube comic book channels and i was like guys i got an interview because i knew they were big fans of your work and so mm -hmm. i was like if you could ask them any question what would you ask so i got two questions that i got from some fellow creators of mine that i wanted to ask you from okay them. one this one comes from Todd. He's over on a channel called Comic Burrito. And he wanted to know um, what went into the decision change to change Kyle's suit from Hal's um, in 50 to the iconic Rainer suit that we see in 51. That was the that was the plan from the beginning. Okay. But he couldn't start out with his design because, you know, it was literally just handed to him in an alley. So the default suit is the, the Gil Kane design uh, suit so the idea really from the beginning was to go with it with a his own design but we had to transition to it story-wise so it, it made sense you know if he first turns on the ring and he's got his own design he, i mean he doesn't even know how the power works so right. it, it kind of wouldn't make sense for him to start with that from day one 
So it was more like as he felt more confident and, and grew as a character, then he was able to put his own spin on it. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I, the thing about it like that, it makes complete sense, but I are like, huh, that's interesting to, to see that transition and that process that goes through that change there. Second question is from a friend of mine named Booth, and he's on one of my shows here on my channel. And he wanted to know, he said, your constructs that you have that the Green Lantern does are some of the most creative and unique ones that he's seen. Was there ever something that you wanted to have the Green Lantern construct that he just never did or that you were never able to put the paper um, or you just didn't get a chance to do that? Um, two times, or more like one and a half. Let me qualify that. <laughs> um, I love Easter eggs with the with the ring creations as often as I can but you know legal department was like okay watch it from you know certain point of view yeah and I had an issue where I had him create Gamera you know the famous monster and they're like and I had already drawn I figured well you know Godzilla they'd recognize maybe they wouldn't know who Gamera was they did I'm like yeah we can't do that so I you know we had I think the inker had to give him like ram's horns or something to kind of <laughs> tweak it a little bit so it wasn't so obviously him so it's like, oh, I was close, but uh, they're like, no, we got to watch that. But the number one uh, character that I wanted to put in there, but they had to change was a surprise to me. I had uh, once in a while, we'd have Kyle in his sketchbook because, you know, he's yeah. an artist. And I had him draw uh, Foghorn Leghorn, the Warner Brothers character. I, I thought Warner Brothers, DC, they owned by the same company. It would be fine. They're like, actually, we, we can't have them in the same image. And I'm thinking, now I could see if it was, Hanna Barbera or something, but it just, I thought, that's crazy. Like, what's going to happen? A lawsuit? How do you sue yourself? But uh, the anchor had to change it to uh, Gleek of the Wonder Twins. Uh, Romeo uh, Tongo had to change it. So I thought it was like, wow, that's weird. I can't have Foghorn Leghorn. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I guess it is what it is, but that was, that was just something I really wanted. Cause I, I just think Foghorn is a very underrated, hilarious yeah. character. And I just, you know, I just wanted to draw him as a Green Lantern. You know, that's so funny. Uh, I just always thought of him doing the oath, like I say, I say, in dark, uh, uh, black, uh, blackest night, and uh, uh, all that sort of thing. Uh, uh, listen to me, boy. I got this power ring. See, I mean, I just think he's a funny character. And drawing him as a Green Lantern, they're like, no, nah, we, we can't put that in there. Like, really, really? <laughs> so that, that's tell me you've done commissions of that then. <laughs> No, no, I, I just, I, I thought maybe nobody else thinks he's funny. So I thought, all right, it's just me then. <laughs> I, I, I desperately want a Boghorn like Horn Le Green Lantern <laughs> TV show now. <laughs> Let's make it work. <laughs> well, here's what's funny. Years and years later, we had the, uh, the, the one uh, Daffy Duck with Duck Dodgers cartoon where it had Sinestro and the core in it. So it's kind of like, see, see. They, well, I, guess they started. I, I, just, I was ahead of my time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because they did. They did the DC uh, Looney Tunes um, books and then uh, just what, a couple years ago. And so they had like. Yeah, well, that's the books, but they actually did an animated special where you had yeah the Duck Dodgers meet uh, Sinestro and, and the core. And it's so, kind of like. So you were just, a, like you said, you're ahead of your time. You're game I changer. suppose. I suppose. <laughs> and even uh, then, Foghorn was in the story. So they're like. Oh, if it had been Daffy Duck, we would have let it slide. But no one likes Foghorn Leghorn. Like, really? He's, he's hilarious. Man. Um, well, one more question that I'm going to let you talk about what you're working on right now. Um, but what was it like getting the team back? Because I know you had a story on the Green Lantern 80th uh, anniversary issue. What was that like just getting to, to write a Green Lantern um, again for, for that book because it was a great book that, it was a lot of great writers. it seemed like that came out of nowhere i remember getting the uh, an email from the editor and you know i get i get a lot of junk email i think everybody does i almost deleted it because I, I thought well maybe it was uh an ad because i get a lot of, of uh you know a comicology and that sort of thing uh, at, you know junk mail or what, and i just thought it was something like green lantern 80th i almost deleted it and something said let me read this like oh they want me to do something like wow so um that was you know well one that was around the time they thought oh well in 2020 like you know our comics are going to go away and that sort of thing yeah like no they, they did it and uh it was it was great and that was uh my first dc work i did all digital uh before mm -hmm. that the only thing i'd done digital was a, a graphic novel i worked with ron mars carl called harkins raiders oh nice get that on camera 
Um, but uh, that was my first foray into doing comics digitally. Because I, I do commercial art digitally. And I thought, you know, with experience, I wanted to try it you know, on the comic side. So being able to do it uh, with Green Lantern, uh, that was it, it was it was a great experience and also some great variant covers out of that kind of wish I'd gotten one but you know we got a Jim Lee one uh, a Dave Finch one uh, so yeah that was that was surprised it just seemed like boom 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 and it was it was done I'm like okay you guys want anything else you know where to find me <laughs> yeah that was a great yeah I ended up getting the I forget who did it the one with all the lanterns on it um, okay I thought that was just a fantastic one but yeah they were so many great ones but that's the thing though, like the artwork in that and the writing in that it was just really well done through and through. And so I was so excited to see that we were getting another Kyle Rayner story with you and Ron and made me, brought me right back to where I, to the nineties. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I think it sold well enough. I remember uh, they also came up with a, uh, a blank sketch cover and I thought well, I'd be good to have, you know, just, for me to do commissions on and it was hard to find I, I every shop had sold out on it and so i'm like okay that's a, I, I was disappointed but then happy at the same time you know yeah um like i said like, last question here for you i to not keep up your time because i could talk to you about comics and green lantern all afternoon but uh i saw on twitter that uh so you retweeted something of some artwork that you had done for a book so what are you currently working on right now? What are you doing? Are you know, is there stuff that you have irons in the fire or commissions? What's what's your world right now with creating art? Well, right now, Van Breed Studios, uh, my friend Alan Cordry, uh, who I did Harkins Raiders with, he, matter of fact, he's the co-creator of, of Harkins Raiders. He's doing a, a, a sword and sorcery type of fantasy story called Sword of Freya that kind of dips into Norse mythology, but with a different take. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, got different chapters by different artists. And so I've got a chapter in there. And also I did some character designs for him. So uh, that doesn't have a, a definite release date right now. He's getting all the artwork and everything done. And then he's going to you know, decide how they want to fund it. Are, they, are we going to do a, a Kickstarter like we did Harkins Raiders or go a different route? You know, just mm -hmm. kind of playing it by ear. So I've got that I'm working on and uh, always doing commissions. I, you know, that's, that's year round all the time. Um, and also, I do a lot of commercial illustration, especially for a company uh, out of uh, Illinois called the Bradford Exchange. Hmm. Um, I, I, I've been working with them for over 14 years. It's great because I never know what they're going to ask me to do. They, they have licensed properties of just about anything you can think of. I've done Marvel stuff, DC stuff, NFL, McDonald's, uh, wow. movies, you know, Disney the whole nine yards it's more like uh because it's it's three-dimensional thing if you ever get a chance go to bradfordexchange.com yeah. and you'll see the type of things that uh, that they they make um so uh between that and uh, and the commission that's <laughs> that's a pretty full schedule yeah um i of late i've been taking sundays off just to kind of decompress and also to deal with no football it's, it's kind of like as a as an avid cleveland browns fan you know i'm kind of like okay next season next season you know. <laughs> so yeah. uh, and and i appreciate you taking the time right now because i know there's an ohio state basketball game on <laughs> in the midst of this I don't, I don't follow a lot of basketball um i'm more just a, a football and, and 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 sometimes wrestling i've been i've been kind of out of wrestling lately i think it's time to come back uh, i'm hearing a lot of good things about this yeah. aew yeah uh wrestling and uh um so there's, there's plenty to watch so awesome. but yeah just uh enjoying us this overcast uh sunday <laughs> afternoon but but yeah, I'm really glad to uh, that we had a chance to chat. You know, anytime yeah, you want to do it, especially seeing that you got a championship belt behind you and everything else. I'm I like, do. Yeah, we we may have to talk a little so, bit more. Yeah, okay. if you uh, have, you guys ever got stuff kickstart coming up, anything or just to chat, let me know. We'll make it work. But if people are interested in following you, what you're doing, uh, or maybe even getting a commission, like how do they how do they get in touch? Where do they follow you? I'm on Twitter at Real Bankster on Twitter. And uh, I'm on uh, Instagram as GL Prime. And I'll have all those links in the video below, of, in the description of this video below, so you guys can follow along. Um, Daryl, thank you again so much um, for A, just creating my favorite Green Lantern, and then B, taking the time to just talk with me about it. So uh, I appreciate it, Gregory. I, I'm, I had a great time. This, is, this was great. I enjoy it. Oh, good, 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 good. So with that being said, uh, if 
you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys check out some of the other interviews and hopefully you can find some time to curl up, grab a book and nerd out. Peace.